name is Sandhi Bhatia, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Rajkumar Goel Institute of Technology, Gajabar. So, in a series of lectures delivering for a subject microcontroller and embedded systems design having code KEC 061, what we have completed? We have completed our unit number first, second, third and fourth. So, in unit number fifth, we are going through some uh, uh, wireless technologies of IoT how the IoT uh, simulated through any software. So, we will look into this unit. So, these are the table of contents that we will cover in today lecture. First one is the IoT technologies, protocols and standards. Here we will talk about the various types of protocols and standards uh, that is used to deploy any IoT devices. After that, we will see the wireless local area networks WLAN. Uh, we will talk about the 802.11 standards because there are some standards according to which companies are manufacturing IoT products. So, we will talk about that. After that, we will discuss the Zigbee that is a wireless protocol, Bluetooth, LoRa and Sigfox. So, we will cover these tape, uh, contents in this lecture. So, uh, first one is the first topic is IoT technologies, protocols and standards. So, first of all, what is the meaning of protocols and standards? Actually, protocols and standards are the rules and regulations uh, which each and every company through a, a globally follow. For example, uh, in the previous lectures, I have discussed, uh, discussed that example. If you have a laptop and it has a USB port, then this USB port is manufactured according to some protocols and standards. So, if uh, we insert pen drive in a uh, uh, laptop in our country and in USA, any other country, then the same, uh, same USB port is there. So, this USB port is manufactured according to the some certain protocols and standards. So, uh, if we are talking about the IoT devices, so same IoT devices can be manufactured. Uh, through some protocols and standards. So, each and every company which are deploying, which are manufacturing these types of IoT devices, they have to uh, follow some protocols and standards. So, in these figures, you can see that we have a WPAN, WLAN, wireless personal area network and wireless local area network. Okay? So, we have billions of devices. We is, have seen that in IoT, billions of devices are connected through the internet. All are inter interconnected to each, uh, with each other and they have some unique address. So, in IoT based system, billions of devices are connected with each other. Okay? And uh, we have a uh, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G nowadays, we are going towards the 5G applications are there. So, we are categorized, we have categorized them. First one is the wireless PAN local area network of, under which we have a, some wireless protocols like we have a Bluetooth, we have a Zigbee, we may have a threads, we have a Wi-Fi. After that, we have a wireless w, uh, WAN, wireless uh, wide area networks under which we have a, some uh, communication technologies like 2G, 3G, 4G, etc. After uh, under which we have uh, also uh, uh, to how to communicate with the uh, remote locations, mobile devices uh, for which we have some technologies like GSM, uh, global system for uh, mobile communication. We have a CDMA, code division multiplex, multiplex X, we have a UMTS, universal mobile uh, telecommunication system. We have a LT, long term ev evaluation. So, you are using your, uh, your uh, mobiles are uh, uh, communicating through LT, you can access the internet. After that, we have other technologies like satellite communication, we have a DSL, DSL means disturb, uh, digital subscriber line, we have a fibers, optical fibers we can use to communicate with the remote locations. We have a, a PLC, PLC means programmable logic controllers. So, all these are the devices which we can use to communicate. We have a low power wide area network, other technologies like Sigfox which is used in some European countries. Basically, these lies in the unlicensed spectrum and basically it is used in European countries. LoRaWAN, it is used in India along with the other countries. Lo LoRa means we have a long range network. Okay? Weightless NB-IoT, NB-IoT means narrow band uh, internet of things. So, all these uh, communication technologies are deployed in our IoT based system, so that our uh, uh, hardware devices can communicate with the remote location through these standards and protocols. 
so in this slide we have categorized all the wireless technologies in particular layers in the previous lecture we have seen that in the iot based architecture uh, we have a three layer four layer five layer six layer seven layer we have discussed that so i am uh, taking here the four layer uh, example first layer is the we have a physical and data link layer after that we have a network layer transport layer and application layer and we we are talking about the wireless technologies like zigbee zwave nb iot wifi lora wan uh, sigfox all are line in the data link layer because uh, in the physical or data link layer these are merge here so physical layer means that we are deploying the physical devices like sensors actuators in the uh, field okay uh, uh, to get the data from the environment so in how, when the data is collected by the physical devices it needs to communicate to the remote location and how the communication can be done communication can be done by using the these devices okay so after the communication uh, we have to uh, go towards the network layer in a network layer we are talking about a networking we are talking about the internet connectivity and uh, these possible through the ipv6 protocols six loraven technology protocol six means this six means ip v6 here this six meaning ip v6 low personal area networks are lies in the networking layer because after the deployment of the sensors we, uh, we need to uh, connectivity and after connectivity we have to ensure its proper networking networking means we are talking about the internet connections after that we need to uh, transfer the packets to the remote location packets means uh, in a data it is in the form of a packets we need to uh, transfer through the transport layer so transport layer, uh, tra transport layer is responsible for transporting the packages to the remote location so how it can be done it can be done uh, using UDT, udp udp means uh, user datagram packets after that we have a dtls dtls means uh, data gram uh, telemetry uh, transport layer security this is basically provides the security to the uh, packets uh, which we are transferring from the one location to the another locations after that we have a going towards the application layer application means we are finally deploying our iot based any application uh, uh, here we need some protocols for uh, we can say that for iot applications we need some components we need some uh, protocols like json json means javascript object notation because we are uh, we, here we have used a hardware technology now if, if we have to complete the system it is made up of hardware plus software so for software for pro simulations for programming we have to use some protocols and standards so cbor means concise binary object representation coap means constrained application protocols mqtt means um, uh, message queuing telemetry transport xmpp means uh, we, uh, we have extensible message and messaging and presence protocols amqp advanced message queuing protocols so we are talking about its basic we will have not covered in uh, much detail so these are the protocols after that these pro through these protocols finally we will go towards the iot application and a service layer so service layer is also must in this layer so you can uh, use seven layer protocol three layer four layer five layer protocol according to your uh, according to your convenience okay so these are the iot technology protocols and standards so we will go one by one first one is the wireless local area network wlan this is basically a cable replacement rf technology traditionally we are using the cables to transmit data from the one location to the another location so this is the alternative to the cable replacement cable technology here we are using the some wireless concept live radio frequency technology it is based upon the 800.802.11 standards basically it uh, has a 802.11 standards and it provides wireless connectivity for interconnecting computing resources at the local levels of an organization so basically in wlan we are deploying the various devices in any organization so all are based upon the cloud computing concepts we can transmit data to the uh, cloud server okay so it provides wireless connectivity for interconnected computing resources at the local levels of an organization it has a less range we can use for a, only a uh, few kilometers not more than that okay so it has some standards 
if we are following the uh, wireless uh, local area network, it is based upon the some standards. 802.11 is the common standard, it has some subsets like 802.11b, 802.11a, 802.11g. 802.11b, it is based upon the standard, it has a frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz and it is lying in the ISM band. Okay? And, uh, uh, some, and its uh, uh, general uh, frequency range is 80 megahertz. It is based upon the frequency hoped spread spectrum. What is the meaning of frequency hoped? Uh, for example, if we are communicating this device to another device, okay? this device, if this is break, then we can use another device to transmit the data, that is the hoping. It has a speed of 1.610 megabyte per second and it had a range of 500 feet. Okay. It also has a standard of 802.11a, it is based upon the 5 gigahertz band and OFDM, it is based upon the OFDM with time division multiplexing, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It has a 20 to 70 Mbps speed and its range is variable. Okay. Uh, it has a fixed range that is a 500 feet range. Okay. It has a variable range. 802.11g is, uh, is the another standard, it is based upon the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz band. It is also based upon the OFDM technology, it speed up to 4, 20, 54 Mbps. So, uh, from this standard to uh, this standard, what we are doing? We are increasing the speed of the, our system. Also, there is another standards available 802.11 and 11 AC, 11 AD, etcetera, but uh, mostly we are using these standards for our IoT technologies. Okay. So, uh, after that, we will talk about the uh, another uh, uh, technologies like Jigbee. So, what is the meaning of a Jigbee? Jigbee is basically a new wireless technology. Traditionally, we are using the Bluetooth, uh, RFID, NB IoT we are using and uh, in the previous lecture, we have talking about the NFC technology, near field communication. So, Jigbee is basically a new wireless technology. So, basically it also have some standards. So, it lie in the top of the standards that is IEEE 802.15.4. IEEE means International Communication, Electrical and Electronics uh, Engineering. Okay. So, all devices is manufactured, it has some standards and it is lie on the top of the standards. So, it is basically designed for low power consumption which along battery to uh, battery to essentially last forever. So, in a uh, Jigbee based system, the power consumption is very less as compared to the other devices. So, it makes possibly completely new network homes we can use in networking, uh, smart homes where all devices are able to communicate and be controlled by a single unit. So, from uh, uh, if we are uh, going for a smart home, then we can implement the various Jigbee devices. So, they can be a, uh, have a very low power consumption and they can be able to communicate with the re, uh, remote servers. So, basically it provides network security, it has a network security because security is the main concern. You have to send the data uh, uh, and it is vulnerable to the devices, we need to secure. And application support services operating on the top of IEEE standard, we have talking about already talking about here. And it operates in, operates in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range and it has a packet delivery speed of 250 kbps, kbps, okay. So, the maximum number of nodes in the network is 1024 with a range up to 200 meter. So, we will uh, look more into uh, the uh, Jigbee. So, basically it is a low power, we have talk, uh, talking about that. It has a low data rate uh, as compared to other uh, wireless technologies available and it is close proximity that is up to personal area wireless ad hoc networks. So, the technology is simple, if we are using the uh, Jigbee based uh, devices, the technology is uh, very much simple as compared to other and it is less expensive than other technologies like WPAN. WPAN needs a uh, lot of uh, uh, nodes to implement our system and uh, such a Bluetooth or more general wireless network such as Wi-Fi. So, it has a low power consumption it, uh, and uh, it is used in the close proximity, but it has a low data rate as compared to other technologies. So, the, if we are talking about applications of Jigbee, applications uh, include wireless light switches, uh, home energy monitors, traffic management system, we can use the Jigbee devices and other consumer and industrial equipment that requires short range low rate wireless data transfer. So, 
it's low power consumption limits transmission distance up to 10 to 100 meters we can only use up to 10 to 100 minute uh, meters here uh, if you are uh, able to uh, uh, within uh, within this range we are able to connect our uh, jigbee devices to the another jigbee devices so it needs clear line of sight and depending on power output and environmental characteristics jigbee devices can transmit data over long distance by passing data through a mesh network the meaning of this line is that uh, to increasing the transmission range for, for one gigabit devices to the uh, uh, another gigabit devices we need a mesh network mesh network means that we have a coordinator node we have a uh, here router no, router network router nodes and we have a end devices node so we are deploying the many gigabit devices uh, to increase the distance up to few kilometers okay so we are following that mesh, mesh networking here. What is the advantage of mesh networking? We will see in upcoming slides. To reach more distance one, distant one. So Jigbee is tip, tip, uh, basically typically used in low data rate application that require long uh, battery life and secure networking. So by using the IOS uh, uh, Jigbee technology, its uh, transmission range is less. Uh, its uh, transmission uh, range and uh, we can increase the transmission range by deploying the uh, many Jigbee devices and it, it is basically uh, depends upon the mesh networking okay, and secure networking. Okay. So uh, these are the Jigbee alliance, so basically it relies on the top of the standards IEEE 802.15, usually vendors of Jigbee devices use system on chip solutions with integrated radio uh, and 60 to 250 kilobytes of flash memory. So basically Jigbee alliance, some they are some of the companies which manufacture Jigbee uh, products uh, and it lies on these standards. So uh, the companies like uh, Philips, Atmel, uh, Siemens, LG's, NEC, Mitsubishi, Electric, uh, Samsung, Texas Instrument, and many more. Arm also is there. So these are the Jigbee Alliance company which is uh, producing the Jigbee products. So this is the symbol of the Jigbee, and it lies on the this standard. So what is the uh, benefits of the Jigbee? It is easy, easy to install and maintain, it is uh, uh, it follows the mesh networking, it is self organizing, self healing network, it is easy, easy to install, the cost is very much less. It is uh, reliable because it is based on the mesh networking, we are talking about here what is the meaning of mesh, mesh networking, it has a multiple channels and uh, it has a less interference tolerance. It is scalable, scalable to thousands of nodes. We can increase the range. It is scalable to thousand number of nodes. We can deploy many number of large number of Jigbee devices to increase our transmission range. It has a low cost, many supplies, open standards. It is basically low cost devices to for uh, uh, communicating to deploy in any, uh, in, uh, uh, any IoT based application. It is uh, very low, uh, low, uh, low in cost. It has a long battery life. Uh, up uh, years on an uh, AA battery, it can last for many time. It is secure AES 128 standards. So basically, uh, I am erasing the contents here. So this is the working of the uh, Jigbee device. How it works, we will look here. So these are the, so in any Jigbee network, we are talking about the one network. Okay. So in one network, we have a one Jigbee coordinator, one Jigbee coordinator, two, we can say that ant devices and many routers, many routers. So we have C coordinator node, we have a R router and we have a E. CRE we can say E the end devices. So one is the coordinator node. Why there is a one uh, coordinator node? Any one network there is one coordinator node. The responsibility of the coordinator node is to connect with the another networks. Okay, so it is basically a uh, uh, it is basically uh, has a master control. It is it communicates with the another networks. We have a uh, many routers uh, uh, and we have a uh, two end devices. So here you can see that. We have a Jigbee coordinator, this Jigbee coordinator is used to communicate with the network okay? and we have a many routers, the responsibility of the routers is to route the information to the another location, relay the, it relay the information and uh, there are two end devices, these are the end devices, so E, this is R, 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 R and this is C. Okay? 
So, the, basically this follows the mesh network. What is the meaning of the mesh network? We will look into delay uh, more, uh, more I am realizing the contents here. For example, uh, I am uh, creating one network. This is the R router, this is another R and this is the another R and this is the coordinator node and this is the end node. Okay. For example, this is the network. Okay, general network. If we have to transmit the information from this end device to the coordinator node, okay, like this or maybe like this. So, all this communication depends upon this router. If this router fail, what will happen? If this router fail, what will happen? We cannot transmit the information from the end device to the this device. This trans uh, network will be fail. So, we will use so we will use i am uh, just a second so we will use mesh networking in mesh networking what we will do if this the problem is that if this router will fail we cannot transmit the information so for that we will create a mesh network we will depend upon another router as well so, if this router will fail, if this router will fail, then what will happen? We can transmit the information through this router. Our network will not fail. So, this is the net, um, meaning of the mesh network. In through mesh network, we can ensure the reliability of the network. Okay. So, this is the one of the application of uh, Zigbee. I am taking the images from the net. So, uh, this is basically a smart lightning system, smart, uh, so under which if any car is passing through the, uh, what is the, uh, nowadays we can see that we have a, uh, for example, in elevated road in Gajiabad. So, we have a uh, lightning system, when the, uh, we are manually controlling the lights. So, but in uh, our IoT, smart IoT based system, smart lightning system, we are deploying the, in each street light, we are deploying the Zigbee devices. Okay. So, whenever any, uh, any car is passing through it, they will glow and when there is no, no vehicle in the range, they will dim. So, uh, we are automatically controlling the street lights. Okay. So, that power consumption is less. So, if there is no vehicle, then this will be off in the off condition. We cannot need to manually control the things here. Okay. This is one of the application. There are a lot of application. We are talking about some basic applications. So, in an area hotel city center Las Vegas, we have a uh, deployment of 1 lakh of uh, Zigbee devices. So, we are controlling the uh, apartment lights. We are uh, controlling the smart park through the Zigbee devices. One of the example, in another example, we have a Hampshire city council, Hampshire UK. We have a deployment of 90,000 connected street lights. So, we are controlling the street light through the our Zigbee devices. So, in a GM Spring Hill plant, 28,773 connected lights, 20 million in, in a 20 million square feet range. These are the Zigbee devices. We have deploying the Zigbee devices and we are connected through the, uh, connected through the Zigbee. Lights are basically Zigbee uh, based, activated through Zigbee. So, we are uh, using the concept of IoT, smart IoT through the deployment of the Zigbee devices. So, uh, we will look into some more applications of the IoT, uh, Zigbee devices, Zigbee home automation, for home automation we can use the Zigbee devices, for smart energies, smart meters, smart dams, smart buildings, for telecommunication services we can use Zigbee devices, for healthcare monitoring we can use L, uh, over Zigbee devices, RF communication, 4C, smart lightning we have seen in the previous uh, slides. For build automation of the buildings we can use uh, um, with Zigbee devices for green power, retail services. So, there are a lot of applications. So, here you can see that for smart lightning, for smart uh, home automation, smart we in the previous slide we have seen this example, smart uh, lightning, smart street light uh, role and uh, for uh, uh, smart green power building automation, we have used many devices. All these images taken from the www.jigbee.org. 
So, for uh, transmitting, we need some transceiver. So, this is the pick of the Zigbee transmi uh, transmit receiver. Transceiver means it has a both the transmitter and the receiver. So, uh, so that is why it is called transceiver. Okay. So, this is the Zigbee transceiver. You can check the Amazon and uh, another devices for the connectivity. So, in Zigbee devices, we have three nodes. Zigbee coordinator node, we have seen that there is one coordinator node, it is responsible to uh, communicate with the remote device and uh, it is a root of the network tree basically. So, information can be relayed through this node. We have, a we have a full function device, here we are talking about the routers, there are many routers here, one coordinator was there and in, it is basically routing that uh, information. So, it needs less memory than Zigbee coordinator, Zigbee coordinator need more memory and it has a less manufacturing code and cooperate. Uh, operate on all topologies like mesh, star, all topo topologies it can work and also act as a coordinator. It has a reduced function device RFI, uh, RFD, it is capable of talking in the networks. The talking within the network is, com uh, is uh, carry out through full uh, reduced function device. It cannot relay data from other devices, so it is only use the integrated devices, it has a less memory. Okay. So, Zigbee Smart Energy is another concept. It has a large range of IoT applications we can use. So, it is advanced version of the that is basically the deployment of the Zigbee in the smart energy uh, applications. So, it follows two stack profiles Zigbee and Zigbee Pro. Zigbee Pro basically offers more features including security that has, it has a more security than the uh, other devices and it is better performance using efficient one to one routing mechanism. So, these tech profiles support full mesh networking, record, um, full ne mesh networking basically we have talking about that we are following the mesh networking in the Zigbee devices. Okay. So, we have already talking about the applications. So, it supports a wide range of network topologies like star, peer to peer or cluster tree. So, this can use this wide range of networking. Okay. So, Another standard is the Bluetooth. We are using the Bluetooth in day to day life. It is also a cable replacement RF technology. It is basically very low in cost in size. We are using the uh, Bluetooth headphones. It is basically a 400 or 500 in cost. It has, but it has a short range up to 10 meter. It is effectively it can be uh, used. If you are going to, uh, for more than 10 meter, we, you cannot use Bluetooth devices. But it can be extendable to 100 meter by using the Bluetooth low energy concept. Uh, it has a uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz band up to 50 mbps it can work uh, but we are using the right now uh, nowadays we are using the bluetooth version 5.0 so it is widely supported by telecommunication pc and consumer electronic companies and it application include healthcare fitness security and home entertainment industry we are using so uh, we will uh, in the further lectures we will look more into the detail of the bluetooth so this is the symbol of the bluetooth okay so, we have another technology LoRa means long range applications. So, basically it is a low power wide area network. It has a uh, large, in range, uh, large range as uh, the name implies and it, it has basically a battery operated and remotely placed regional and national lo global locations. So, it basically it has a wireless technology and it, its range is large. We can deploy up to many of kilometers, uh, 10 plus kilometer, 25, uh, 50 kilometers, up to 100 kilometers, we can use LoRa van. So, basically, it is basically, uh, there are some uh, shortcomings in the another, uh, like uh, other uh, wireless technologies like Zigbee, Wi-Fi. So, this is the replacement of that. So, basically it uses in the 433 megahertz in Asia, 915 megahertz in North America and 816 megahertz in Europe. Okay. So, the data transmitted by an end device will be the received by every base station in that range. Okay. So, in our last slide we are talking about the Sigfox. So, so Sigfox is basically used in the European countries. It is lies in the license spectrum of 433 megahertz in Asia, 915 megahertz in North America and 816 megahertz in using the ultra low. Uh, uh, narrow band technologies. So, basically Sigfox is, uh, has a uh, range of 30 to 50 kilometer in rustic region. In metropolitan areas it has a range of 3 to 10 kil, uh, kilometers. Okay. So, here uh, this information can be realized to more distance, but in the uh, in Sigfox SIM card is not essential, uh, we cannot use SIM card. So, the cost relies upon the number of messages sent every day and the volume of messages. So, the cost of Sigfox depends on how many messages can be transmitted in one day. So, thank you everyone for your patience. I hope you have enjoyed my lecture. Thank you.